Hello and welcome to CS264. This is lecture 14 and this is lesson 4. I'm John Keating and in this lecture I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the interface segregation principle, one of the solid principles that we've been looking at in this lecture and set of lessons. So what does this tell us? It says that any client should not be forced to use an interface which is irrelevant to it. Now this may resonate with you because we talked a little bit about that last time where we had this eye shape interface that included a get area and perhaps a get volume and not every child class that used this space would need to use the volume for example the get volume method so we were forcing them to implement it a little bit later and and to throw an exception so really rather than having one fat interface here we need numerous smaller interfaces that are preferable and they're based on groups of methods with each interface serving one submodule. So in this example, we'll begin by looking at some of the code from the previous LSP example. And as I said, you remember, we took the iShape interface and added to it to demonstrate how not implementing or throwing an exception could be seen as a violation of LSP for the squares and rectangle example, as a replacement of the parent class with the child class and change behavior. But more importantly, we introduced a situation where lots of child classes were forced to implement functionality that was irrelevant. So a simple solution here, split the eye shape interface into two interfaces, one for area, one called eye area, and that will implement the get area interface, and one which we're going to call eye volume for implementing the get volume interface. Now, you should note that I've also included a change to the shape base class here to show how to implement base classes, interfaces, and children. You could use eye shape, of course, here as well. You know. Um, remember that the properties or the attributes can be declared on an interface in C-sharp. A quick look, you'll see here's an abstract class called shape, for example, and I've created an interface called iShape, and they both contain properties, one for side and one for side here, okay? Because um, we're just going to deal basically with, with squares and rectangles and things, I guess. Okay, so what's important to understand is that we have this these attributes that can be declared in the interface, not just in a shape. Uh, sorry, and not just in a class. There's an abstract class, and here's an interface. Okay. And this is about declaration. The interface properties typically don't have a body. As you can see, they don't have a body down here. Okay. But you can specify a getter and a setter exist, but you don't have to implement how they behave. So if you have a look at this uh, article from Microsoft on um, classes and structs and interfaces and properties, it tells you lots of interesting stuff. What's happening here is that we don't inherit. The declaration tells us that we need to implement or redeclare the child class. It's different than in a class where you may actually be inheriting. You will be inheriting, there's no may, okay. Um, so the child classes don't inherit anything from interfaces, you just implement them, and the attributes are not automatically part of the implementation. So if you want this, then you have to declare an abstract class. It's a fairly obvious example to good design, actually, so I won't labor too much. And I'm trying to reduce the amount of time I do in this lesson and the next one because the LSP one was about 15 minutes. So first thing we're going to do is create some interfaces, the abstract class um, uh, called shape here. Um, it's just as an alternative, but we're really using this. That was just for example purposes. So we have this eye shape interface and this eye shape interface um, has its side, declares this getter and setter, doesn't tell you how to implement it. We have a volume that implements the get volume method and an interface that tells us about the get area method. So we create some concrete classes now that are derived from the base classes, the base interfaces, sorry. Um, and note that they only implement the interfaces they require. So this conforms to ISP. So nothing is forced to use an, uh, 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 an interface that it doesn't use. So we have a square class here implementing I shape and I area. So we have the side here and we have, you know, we're now seeing how this should work and how it's implemented. Um, this is really, really important, okay? And we implement the get area because we've, we're, we're, sorry, we, yeah, we implement the get area because we had it declared in I area up here. So that's our get area. So we could change I shape to shape up here. Okay, we could do this. And it doesn't generate any errors. You can look and work through the code and you see it just works and it will work pretty much the exact same. Exact same. Okay, so now let's look at cube. So now we have a cube, and the cube has a shape, okay, because it has a side, and um, it has an area and a volume, so we implement both. 
okay and up here we just implemented area so again we have our double side here private double side our cube which takes uh, you know constructor here and then we have we can some methods to be able to deal with the side setting returning side and then we implement the area the get area for a cube and we implement the get volume for cube as well and in our example we have a cube which we've created here and we can calculate and call the cube area and we can call the cube volume um, because that's fine and we have a square here uh, it's a new square and we can just calculate the square area but of course if we um if we try to uh, implement this we get this error because we see that square does not contain a definition for get volume so there's no accessible extension for thematic volume and that's as we would expect so this seems to work fine um I'm going to open the terminal and run this just so you can see it. As I said, this is a fairly trivial example, but it does make sense and um, it's a good way to work. So let me see the ISP. And our program works nicely and it behaves as we would expect. Okay. And um, so this is the interface segregation principle. It's fairly straightforward. The client should not be forced to use an interface which is relevant to it. Okay. And we saw that there was a lot of that going on in the LSP here. But again, a lot of the time with these examples, we're just focusing on the one aspect to the example. And then we're not, um, you know, we're not thinking about the ones that might follow and so forth. You know, so I'm trying to work through a set of designs through these five examples where I build and I build and I build. And I don't have to go backwards and change things. In the next lesson, we're going to look at DIP, which is the dependency inversion principle. Okay, but this was ISP. Thank you very much for watching.